So 2023 has delivered some unbelievable smartphones from performance monsters to budget beasts all the way through to DSLR camera killers that can see in the dark. I have assembled here what I think are the greatest possible options across multiple different categories, some of which you may have never heard of, and I've also included my least favourite phone, which I will smash here today on camera. Come on! Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and want to see more, but let's crack on with the first, which is the best bang for buck. So this is not necessarily the cheapest, that'll come later on, but it might offer the best value for money. Enter the Poco F5 Pro. Now you do also have the standard Poco F5, which is also a compelling option, but I think for the extra £100 to get the Pro, it might be worth doing. Not only do you get 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, but you also get a 120 hz WQHD Plus AMOLED display, a whopping 5160 mAh battery with wireless charging, an IP rating, and the latest Android 13 software. Yes, Poco only guarantee two years of OS updates and three years security, and the triple camera has a decent main sensor but still suffers from no telephoto, so no optical zoom, and that almost useless two megapixel macro, but don't let that put you off. The 8 Plus Gen 1 chip powering the phone may not be the 8 Gen 2, but it's still an absolute beast, also seen in the Galaxy Z Flip and the Fold 4s amongst others, and the phone overall looks, feels, and delivers like an absolute champ. You do also have other great phones which previously probably would have been in this kind of flagship killer area of the market, including the likes of the Xiaomi 13 standard and the OnePlus 11, but at two, 250, £300 more expensive than the Poco F5 Pro, I can't really justify that leap. Brilliant, brilliant job again from Poco. Take a bow. So then we've got two phones from a brand that is really making waves. Techno Mobile aren't a new company, having been established back in 2006, but what they have done is gone on an all-out onslaught of the market in 2023, with a spree of products including this new Camon 20 Pro, offering a unique and stylish back design, 120Hz AMOLED full-screen experience, Android 13 software, stereo speakers, and a 5000 mAh battery. The triple camera overall isn't incredible, expected at this price point, but the main 64 megapixel sensor is decent, especially surprisingly in low light, as the RGBW sensor replaces the green array solution with a white one for more light capture, and you have 4K video as well, and you also get a charger, a very nice case, and Type-C earbuds, all in the box, but it's not the most eye-catching phone that they've released this year. For that, we go to this guy, the Phantom V Fold, which on paper seems to offer a similar package to what, say, the Samsung Z Fold 4 offers, but for £500 cheaper. Basically the exact same front and inner design with 120Hz AMOLED displays across the board. Solid performance with the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus chip, the same as in the Oppo Find N2 Flip, a triple rear camera and a 5000 mAh battery, which is actually larger than Samsung's offering. So then it just comes down to build reliability and software. It doesn't look and feel quite as refined as the Fold 4, and I can't really say one way or the other yet how this will hold up over years of strenuous use because I've only been playing around with it for, you know, a couple of months. And Techno's high OS is not quite as well-rounded and feature-rich as Samsung's One UI. You also probably won't get as many software updates here, but it is still Android 13 and some 30% cheaper than Samsung's offering. Speaking of foldables though, there are so many options which should you choose? Well, firstly, you have to decide which aspect ratio or size you want to go with. You could go with this first traditional style of foldable that we saw, this long and thin and large. That's what she said. <laughs> In which case, the Honor Magic VS is another stellar option. It offers a great all round package of really solid hardware, competitive camera, and the joint largest battery of any foldable currently available, alongside, believe it or not, the Phantom V Fold. But the software, while fine and improving with every update, is probably still not quite as refined again as the Samsung Z Fold 4. The Z Fold 4 is £250 dollars more expensive again though, so it kind of depends for you how important that software aspect is. But what if you want a flip? Normal sized phone to pocketable. It's embarrassing, I don't have a pocket there. <laughs> that would have looked so good, just ping! Not to be. There you go. I should have done it that way. Boom. Job done. 
Samsung are again in the market with the Z Flip, and you also have flips from Motorola, but I think the Oppo Find N2 Flip is currently the best option from what's available. Great design, solid camera, easy to use software, powerful MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus chip, and zero gap with probably the least most noticeable crease in the game. But my personal favorite form factor is phone first, tablet second, much like Oppo's other foldable, the standard N2. The most usable out of all foldables when folded in, but you also still have that extra screen real estate if you need it. However, the fact there is quite simply no global release still as yet, and I don't think it looks like we're gonna get one, it makes it a very hard sell. So then what are we left with? Well, for a similar size and shape, you now have the new Google Pixel Fold, which is quite the conundrum on my first impressions. Stock Android experience, as ever impressive Pixel camera processed images, and nice outer design. But the inner bezels are a little bit garish. The five nanometer Google Tensor T2 chip is powerful, but not industry leading, certainly in terms of raw numbers. And the price, which at 1900 pounds, there or thereabouts, is pretty steep. It may be the one that I go on to use long term, but it's certainly not perfect. But what if you don't want to gamble with a foldable phone? You just want a flagship, premium, standard phone that possibly isn't the one £200 dollars extra bells and whistles ultra device. It'll tick all the major boxes and still feel new within two or three years. Well, in my opinion, you have two options. The first is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus. As always with new phone launches, during its launch, it was kind of overshadowed as always by the Ultra model. Everyone kind of flocked to talk about this one and this went a little bit under the radar. And I think that's a bit of a shame because I think it might be a better all round phone for the money. Feels super premium in the hand, benefiting from the sharp, precise, flat display and tiny bezels like a flagship iPhone, but has those ever so slightly rounded frames that actually feel more comfortable in the hand and contains all of the major hallmarks of the more expensive 23 Ultra. For £350 extra, you do get a higher megapixel main sensor, an extra telephoto lens, a slightly larger battery, and the S Pen. But that's about it. Then from there, basically the same phone. That means super top specs and features like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, brilliant stereo speakers, latest One UI 5.1 software, Samsung DeX, IP68 rating, etc. And this is also similar to the previously mentioned Xiaomi 13, compared to the Pro and the Ultra. Again, these two are going to get all of the headlines and uh, the younger sibling is going to be left in the dirt. Again, objectively, the 13 Pro and Ultra are better phones, but I think this is actually my favourite out of the three as an all-round device, again, for the money when we're talking pound for pound. For a start, I like the really sharp, precise lines on the frame and the flat display. And it's also a slightly smaller form factor, so it is easier to hold. The Ultra is a bit of a beast to hold. The Pro, not so much. They're fairly similar, but it is still easier to hold the standard 13. So therefore, the Pro would have to outspec quite significantly the 13 for me to prefer it. And it doesn't. Very similar triple camera, similar display technology, similar stereo speakers, same chipset, same software, and only a slightly bigger battery, all for £250 more expensive. So again, it's the 13 standard for the win. No brainer. Next up, Golden Oldie. This is a phone which isn't 2023, but I still think has a place and a market and a big one. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I could have said for all of the features pretty much that I'm going to talk about, you could go out and buy the iPhone 14, but you may as well just get the cheaper iPhone 13, golden oldie. You're basically getting the same phone. It uses basically the same A15 Bionic chip, basically the same camera, basically the same battery, basically the same OLED display, and the exact same software. Still definitely has legs if you can find it at a cheaper price than the 14, which you probably can. Now for the category of camera royalty. And this was a tough one. I could say the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I could say the S23 Ultra, but I'm saving those for later categories, as you'll see. So I have three phones which the camera is the core focus, and if you're looking for a great camera, these might be the options for you. First up, the phone that can see in the dark, the Huawei P60 Pro. Oh, I had some fun playing with this. Oh, mwah. Don't know why I just kissed it. It's a bit strange. 
forgive me and ignore if you would. Now I'm not gonna talk about this phone in massive detail because I did a dedicated camera test safari video just a few weeks ago, which I massively suggest you watch after this if you love animals and smartphone photography. But to cut a long story short, it's a beautiful phone, has an amazing build, great specs and a camera to die for. One of the camera's main components is its variable aperture, which means the main 48 megapixel sensor can go from f4.0 all the way open to f1.4, letting in so much light that in conditions that would be practically impossible for most phones, you can still pick up some incredible details. And the 48 megapixel telephoto lens is so steady that even at 10x with moving subjects, the lack of any problematic motion blur is just straight phenomenal. But is the phone enough? outside of that great camera. Well, you have the age old conundrum of the last few years with Huawei phones. It's the lack of official Google support. And is that a problem? There are Google app workarounds that are almost the experience from another standard Android phone, but is almost the experience enough? Some people mention having issues with some banking apps due to the lack of Google services. And 5G is also not available here due to the type of Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip they've been forced to use. These could be issues for you. With all this choice available, it's still a slightly hard sell. Either way, because of its ridiculously good hardware build, unbelievable camera, it's still one of my favorite phones of the year. But in this camera category, we also have the two one inch sensor beasts, the Xiaomi 13 and the Vivo X90 Pro. The 13 Ultra boasts another partnership with camera brand Leica, and these subtle touches can be seen all over the device. But the redonkulous quad 50 megapixel camera rig is the real talking point including an ultra wide and two telephoto lenses, one of them being periscope, 3.2 and five times optical zoom. And the 13 Ultra also has the much talked about one inch main sensor. Larger camera sensors can let in more light and often provide you with much better quality and detail from your images. And incredible low light performance can also be seen here. Like with the Huawei P60 Pro, we also have a variable aperture here on that main sensor, but it isn't quite as flexible as on the P60 Pro. It's either one or the other, f4.0 and f1.9, I think. I am correct. It's either one or the other, it's open or closed. I think you've got 10 different intervals with the P60 Pro, just the two here. But the lack of flexibility in that variable aperture is made up for in other areas of the camera. Not only is that rear rig hardware exceptional, but the software has also seen some upgrades too. And there are so many features, so much customization that you just feel like a kid in a candy store. There is still no 4K on that front facing video, which I find, for the rest of the brilliance of the phone and the camera and the price, remarkable and just a bit strange. But the biggest thing is you might not even be able to get this in your region anyway, because again, we don't have a global release yet to be confirmed and may simply never come. So again, that makes it a hard sell, which is a huge shame. But Xiaomi's loss is potentially Vivo's gain because we have another one inch camera sensor right here. And this is a global release. The main 50 megapixel Sony IMX989 sensor provides quite possibly one of the best opportunities to capture quality images from a smartphone. Incredible colors, amazing dynamic range, and the low light performance aided by Vivo's in-house V2 image processing chip is nothing short of breathtaking. The zoom isn't quite as impressive with no periscope and only two times optical, and it has a slightly smaller battery as well than the 13 Ultra, but the four nanometer MediaTek Dimensity 9200 is a powerhouse, and it's another top flagship phone for 2023. Some of you may be here saying, why haven't you included the Pixel 7 Pro in all of this? It is a very popular smartphone camera. That's probably because it was from last year and we're due to see the Pixel 8 series coming in the next couple of months. So I'm going to save my opinions on the Pixel phones for the new release. So what if you want a solid camera, solid battery, solid display, solid build quality, latest software, but you don't want to pay through the nose? for a smartphone. The No Frills Reliable Experience Phone. Well, you could choose the new Samsung Galaxy A54. Android 13 with One UI's 5.1, 5000 mAh battery, 120Hz AMOLED display, stereo speakers, all for £449. But the Google Pixel 7a might be the better option for you, depending on how important true stock Android and the ridiculously good image processing software is to you. 
the 64 megapixel main sensor and the 13 megapixel ultra wide will serve up an average consumer stunner covering most people's needs and even though it doesn't have optical zoom or a huge zoom length the max eight times digital zoom thanks to google's undoubted brilliance in the software side of things is surprisingly impressive for the joe blogs on the street using ai and post-processing the pixel 7a is able to enhance the photos further than what the physical hardware is able to achieve but what if no frills simply isn't enough you want all the juicy bells and whistles the most premium all singing all dancing flagship monster powerhouse beast big cheese yeah i've run out of adjectives brilliant phone amazing ecosystem and compatibility with other devices as a whole and a premium hefty price tag to boot well i think you've got two main options and it really comes down to whether you want ios or android the iphone 14 pro max is objectively the best apple has to offer great display premium build amazing speakers the most powerful chip on the planet the list goes on i don't think the camera is as impressive as many people go on about it's very good but we we're talking best of the best here and this often gets the title for that and i'm not sure it quite warrants it Despite the brilliant video performance and stabilization, the actual hardware isn't incredibly impressive compared to the Android big hitters, and the software and post-processing often isn't as good as the likes of the Pixel phones either. Portrait shots aren't as accurate as I would like in terms of edge detection, and it also still suffers from motion blur issues when shooting moving subjects, and lens flare continues to plague. And I've also noticed a fairly big disappointment when I'm out and about and I go to take a shot of something quite far in the distance, and I remember that for that specific day, I've got the iPhone in my pocket and not one of my favorite Android phones. And the zoom just doesn't cut it. I also still don't get the blue bubble, green bubble thing. The features on WhatsApp are fairly similar to the features on iMessage, but it's cross-platform. So if you've got an iPhone or an Android, you can use the same the same software. But all of that aside, it's a fairly complete camera rig. The camera app itself is one of the most reliable to use as well. And the ecosystem that everyone bemoans for being a walled garden I don't, again, see the issue. You can't really hate on a company trying to make money and also wanting control over all of the moving parts within hardware and software between devices so they can keep everything working so well together. I edit on a Mac, so AirDrop for file transfer is crucial. I use AirTags for my wallet, keys, and Bonnie. So again, the iPhone is necessary for this and social media apps still seem to work slightly more reliably in my experience than on android so it is another top option but if you are in the apple is disgusting give me android camp which some of you are then the samsung s23 ultra is my top bells and whistles pick incredible all-round camera 200 megapixel main seriously good zoom amazing stabilization that matches or tops the iphone brilliant battery life now that the world gets the qualcomm snapdragon 8 gen 2 chip which is android's most powerful and you have the s pen that no other phone offers it's also one of the most premium and stylish phones out there and the ecosystem for samsung is again up there with the likes of apple they have so many devices they all work so well together and between the two of them on that even the little things like bluetooth connectivity between your radio or your car they just seem to work slightly more reliably on these two devices in my experience again it could be user and handset dependent honorable mention here the honor magic 5 pro very very complete device lovely frosted back very impressive display powerful performer and last time i checked you could get this and a whole host of extra goodies for under a thousand pounds so for a top flagship phone this might be a brilliant option and finally my least favorite phone which i'm gonna smash on camera now it's the infinix smart 7. And the reason is not necessarily because this is a terrible phone, because for £75, it offers actually quite a lot. It's a phone for a start, it runs Android, it has a display, it has a camera, it has a battery, it functions. But like with the previous Infinix Smart 6 phone, creators, especially on TikTok, are using their affiliate links to get you to buy these sorts of phones only to fill their pockets, telling you that it's going to be as good as the latest iPhone or the latest Samsung phone at 900 odd pounds less. When in reality, fundamentally, it's flawed in almost every area. For 75 quid, all fine and dandy. But let's call a spade a spade. You know what they say, if it sounds too good to be true. For a start, remember it's 2023, we have Android 12, which is nearly two years old. 
and they probably won't update this. We have a 720p screen, not even full HD, which is pretty painful. The four day battery that creators will spout is a day there or thereabouts, just like pretty much any other 5000 mAh battery phone. If you're going to use it, it's going to drain. If you're going to leave it on the side, you'll get four days. And the dual camera is basically a single, with the second lens being a 0.3 megapixel depth sensor. Yeah, and the main 30 megapixel is average at best. Another reason why none of them will show you actual images from the phone. They'll just go, oh, it's got a dual, there you go. Look at, oh, can, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you, can you, can you see it? No, can't see it because you're not showing it for a good reason. And then half the comments will say, what's the video like? Is it 4K? Can you use it for TikTok videos? And they go, yeah, yeah, you can. I'll, I'll do my next TikToks on it. And then they don't because the front camera is five megapixel and 720p max resolution. Also, if you do decide to take photos and videos on it, the 64 gigabytes of storage will run out pretty soon. So again, when they say massive storage, fibbing to be polite. Again, let's not con people into paying for things just so that you make affiliate money. 70 pounds or 80 pounds that in this current global climate, they could really do with to then not just have a phone, which is just a dead brick that they're not gonna use and they're gonna pick up one of their old phones again, which is probably better. Again, I must repeat, nothing against Infinix. They make some great phones and it is actually okay for that sort of money. I just hate the selling of dreams on TikTok culture that we now live in just so that people could earn affiliate money. It's just plain wrong. And it's about time somebody called them out on it. So I am going to smash this phone on the table. Let me go and get a hammer. Here we go. Are you ready? Hammer, phone, Infinix, one, two, Come on! I'm not gonna do it because I know there's a lot of waste in this world and somebody could make better use of it. Waste is waste. I appreciate the lucky position I'm in where I get to test loads of different phones. And I know someone out there could make very good use of this phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give it away and I'm also going to give away Poco F5, which is here. So I'm gonna give away that phone and that phone. Two phones gonna be given away. But before I tell you how to enter, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Pulseway. Have you ever wanted to clone yourself and be in two places at the same time or remote into any system from one place without actually physically needing to be there? Well, Pulseway has got you covered because it's a super powerful IT monitoring and management platform that allows you to effortlessly check in and oversee all of your IT assets from anywhere, anytime using their easy to use mobile or desktop app. Automate, run scripts, remote control, patch systems, monitor CPU usage, and catch critical vulnerabilities before they become a problem. With improved security compatibility with all operating systems and real-time alerts, Pulseway is one hell of a tool. And one great thing is you can try it all without the need to input any card information or sign up to any promises of long-term contracts. So go and try it out using the link in the video description. So you have two chances to win one of these phones. One will be selected on Instagram, one will be selected on Twitter. Make sure you go over to those accounts at ASB official on both, like that post and tell me which phone from this list is your favorite. And make sure you follow me on both those platforms so that I can DM the winners once they have been announced. Two random winners will be selected and it is a global giveaway. This video has taken an absolute age to make so if you did enjoy it, a like and subscribe would be absolutely wonderful i hope you have a great rest of your day my name is adam you've been the best as always i love you and leave you i'll see you in the next one it's sbytp south